Welcome back. Uh, glad to know that you're still watching the run-up. Educational policies are initiatives mostly by governments that determine the direction of an educational system, a distinctive way in which the society inducts its young ones into full membership. So every modern society needs good educational policies to guide it in the process of such initiation. The poor performance of the education sector in Nigeria has become very worrisome. What exactly is the problem? Is the educational policy faulty or is it the implementation that is faulty? What are the impl implications for national development? These are the issues that we will be discussing today on the run-up. We will be discussing today uh, these things, like uh, uh, Uche has said, but um, we're being joined by a Nigerian professor of soil science. I, I, I decided to start like that because it's a household name now. Um, uh, he lectures at the Michael Okpara University of Agriculture, Omudike. He is also the national president of Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. I'm sure you've guessed by now that we are pleased to welcome today Professor Emmanuel Osodeke. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's just begin with uh, the turning issue. What's the state of things between ASU and the federal government now, especially after the October salaries? Professor Osodeke, yes. Yes. Well, since we, that, that strike was called off, based on promises, nothing has happened. As far as we come. Hello, sir. We still, we don't seem to hear you. Strike for the problem. Strike is over. Everything is okay. okay. Which is clearly against what? Nothing, nothing has happened against it. We call it that strike. Oh. Even they don't, no meetings. The negotiation committee was set up by government. They have uh, dismissed, they, they dismantled it. So nothing is happening. We, we, we parents, we uh, brothers and sisters, we Nigerians are worried that uh, there might be a relapse of, uh, into what happened in the uh, eight months or so uh, inside this year. Are we looking at that or you're finding alternatives to solving the problem? What Nigeria should do, if you remember, the National Assembly, the Speaker met with us indicating that they have agreed on X, Y, Z things for a Google basis we call up the strike. So Nigeria should put pressure on them to implement those things they said. They make promises they don't promise. That's what results in strikes. So they should do those things they promise, pay back the backlog salary, finish the negotiation, pay uh, N academic allowances, in the adult, use UTAS. Those are the things we agreed on. But today they have pardoned everything. So Nigerians should talk to their leader, people they elected, to do the, what is the, need, the needful. All right. Uh, we're trying to make emphasis here. And of course, judging from the last statements that you made about Nigerians, uh, you know, putting pressure on people in government to do, carry out their promises. But then if you had all it takes, what would be, you know, your dream university system? What would you be expecting? How would you think or how would you want the Nigerian university system to be like? You see, what I want a university to do is just like every other university in the world. Hmm. A university is universal. It's not about a local thing. Do what others are doing. And what are they doing? I'll give you an example. In West, in West, in West Africa, the least country, budgetary allocation to education is 16%. That's the least. But Nigeria is 5.9. Allocate a substantial amount of your budget to education as well it as well done all over the world but give you only 5.9 that's the problem two allow university to run on their own to run not be not you have interference from the office of accountant general interference from the office of the head of, of head of service uh, interference from national assembly those are the problem we have today let the university run give them their budget and allow them run their money not the money of university be run by the a counter general office. No salary of a professor in a university be paid for a counter general office. Those are the crises we have today. And any day the government have the will to ensure that the university is allowed to do as it was doing in the 60s and 70s, there will not be any problem. 
Well, you know, whenever discussions are held between government and uh, ASU and all that, uh, the issue of autonomy doesn't seem to be like the foremost thing. How much autonomy do you really need in the university? Because when you talk about financing the university and letting uh, the universities run their finances as they please, uh, what about generating the finances from within the university and not even relying on the government again. Do you also consider that um, as part of being autonomous? Can, can we mention one university in the world owned by the government that is financed solely by the universities? There is none. It depends on how the money gets there. So that is the problem. So when I hear this autonomy, financing, when you say autonomy, we are not saying the, the government still run it through the agency they have appointed, which is the governing council. The federal government, the president inaugurated a governing council to run the university on its behalf. What we are saying, let that council run the university and manage the fund coming to the universities. That's what we are saying. So also the, the students are paying, they are paying their dues, everybody is paying. Government allow the structure you have in the law. There is a law. Every university has a law that tells you who should manage the fund. And the fund is managed by the Finance and General Purpose Committee of, 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 the, of the Governing Council. So if the president appoints the chairman of the Governing Council, let that chairman you appointed, you have trust in, run the university and then report to you. And every five years, you set up a panel to probe the university, called vision panel, which they have not been doing. That is what the law says. And that's what we said, the government should implement the law that they have passed, that is in place. In the university, there is no room for head of service. In the university, there is no room in the law for accountant general to intervene. There is none. So a lot of rough as by the law you are already in place. All right. Uh, what exactly does the education sector need? Uh, because for the purpose of this conversation this morning, we are looking at actually education generally in Nigeria. Uh, what would you say the education sector needs? Uh, of course, we're going to be looking at tertiary education, which you rightly represent. But then for the incoming um, government, because we're, we're, we're looking at 2023, there's going to be general elections. Of course, power is going to change hands. What would be your expectation for the education sector for the incoming gov from the incoming government? Well, my own across the world, that is the local government, uh, the state government, and the federal government, they should do the. I saw the, the clips you were showing. Mm. Classrooms where students are sitting on bed floor. Classroom where the books have been blown off and nobody's interested. Mm. So that is it. In the 60s, 70s, and 50s, and early 80s, if you, you look at you, you at a typical government primary school, it attracts people to go to there. Even their children are there. But today, because they have been able to remove their children, extracted and taken abroad, they are no more interested in the educational sector. Go and check. I was in a state, in the local government, where you hardly see vehicle moving on the road, and the governor is building a flyover that will cost more than 20 billion naira. But all the primary school and secondary that local government, none. Is in such a way that any right taking man will send his children. And if you put 10 billion in those you secondary school, primary school, he will transform all of them in the interest of the people. But that government is more interested in building flyover. That has no use. You build a flyover when you have so much traffic and you have a problem. But today you are building flyover in a village, all the primary and secondary schools are all dead. You see the misplaced priority. That's our problem. Any day will not see government putting priority in education because what there, there is no a country that will develop it when your education, primary, secondary are dead, as you see today, or they have been taken over by the private sectors. That is the crisis we are having. Look at it, you are, you are, you are seeing what you are showing. These are children of people who earn 30,000 a month at minimum wage. They have no options. When the children grow up and look at the inconsistency in the system, look at what they have passed through, you now have the state of free security you have today. That is what the government should look at that. Buy us, buy this is not the solution. The solution is giving the children, the average children, the children of the poor, access to standard education as you have all over the world. Once you do that, you solve this problem of security. But as long as you keep on what you are doing so, ensuring that children sit up on the floor, come to school with bare feet, and what have you, no lunch, no breakfast, will have a problem.
So I expect the next government, first, the governor should allow local government to go. Today they have been seized. They have been captured by the governors. They should release them. They are allowed to put at least 50 to 20% of their budget in education, primary and secondary, and ensure that the system grows. That is where we need to go to. Okay, let's just uh, re-emphasize what this uh, low funding to universities especially has caused. Uh, what is it that we, is the marked lack in the university because of this poor funding? Can you just describe the situation for us in the Nigerian universities right now? I will give you an example. We went to a first generation university, which is the first set of university that were the best in the world in the 70s, 80s. You know what we saw? They were using stove as bouncing burner. As low as that. That is the problem. No facilities, no laboratories. In the 60s, 70s, people were coming from Saudi Arabia for medical treatment in the University of Ibadan Teaching Hospital. Today, how many persons want to go to that state hospital? Because they have refused to furnish it, mm -hmm. provide money for infrastructure, provide money for laboratory equipment, send people out or within for proper training so that those places will run very well. And you don't see our president jetting out every once, every while, so, uh, as regular as possible for training abroad. They go to our hospital and get treated. That is what we want the next president who will rule Nigeria. One, to have his children in Nigerian universities, to have his grandchildren in Nigerian universities, to ensure that when he's sick, he goes to a hospital in Nigeria. They should upgrade the system. And the most damaging part is this. If you listen to Central Bank, we are spending trillions of naira as school fees in other countries. We are paying in other countries to develop their universities, their colleges, of medical, colleges and health system. When we don't, and nobody is coming from those as students. That is the crisis we are having. So anytime you watch out between September, October, November, there is a heavy increase in exchange rate between Naira and dollar. And you know why? Very easy, simple. The people are looking for hard currency to pay their school fees abroad. So any day we stop, we develop our university so that people from Benin, from Kenya, from Nigeria, from Australia, as it used to be in those days, come to Nigeria as students, who, the university will earn money, hard currency. When you now have the laboratory that are working, the system that is working, Consultancy will be there. People, companies like Shell, Dan Goteako, will be coming to the university for consultancy in such a way that they also generate funds. And that's what we're talking about, need assessment. That was the idea. And we told the government, if you can put 1.3 trillion naira in Nigerian universities, they will get to such a state that all these big companies will be coming to the university for consultancy. You must have students coming from abroad to our universities. That's what we're saying. And they refuse to. What is your level of engagement with uh, the people who are aspiring to become leaders tomorrow? Because we've seen so many groups in Nigeria, Editors Guild, even the religious uh, groups, and so many other groups engaging the people who are uh, trying to become leaders of tomorrow, uh, in Nigeria tomorrow uh, to set an agenda, sort of. But we have seen ASU to be silent. I don't know whether there's a reason to that, that you're not engaging them now, that they're still trying to enter, so that you get results when they do enter, if they enter. Well, at the appropriate time, our own idea is if you want to engage them, which they have not agreed to, is that we must engage all of them as a group, not on individual basis. We want a debate. All the candidates are fallible. Then we'll have a discussion with all of them. Let them tell all of us in the presence of all the other candidates what they intend to do. Not what we are seeing today. You go to somewhere, they say one thing, they go to another, they say another. We want something that can be documented. All the media houses will be there. Then they will be there, all the candidates, and we'll have five, six, eight hours of discussion. Let them tell Nigeria what they want to do. That's what they don't want to. People are dodging. Interesting. Well, what about the fighting within? Uh, well, maybe that's not the right word to use, but you have ASU and then you have KONWA, I think. Um, are you now relating as brother-sister or you're still two par parallel um, bodies running the university? How is the relationship between ASU and KONWA? Uh, so we don't know what is called KONWA. They were used as an agent of Sabotoa to see how they can break the strike. That was what they were used for, Nabda, Conwa. They were just used. But thank God, it has backfired. I now hear that Conwa want to go to court against the government. You see, they use you and dump you. 
When we were strike, they were they were cutting them. But now that the strike is over, they have abandoned them. You had it that they want to go on strike because they've not been paid. But they were promised they will be paid as soon as they, they, they allowed them to be registered to sabotage ASU struggles. So that is it. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like Conway. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like Namda. That is it. So we, we don't have parallel group. We don't have struggle. Nothing. Right. They make noise. during strike. There's been a lot of conversations come up, you know, uh, for a while now, how that Nigerian graduates are unemployable. I know you've, you, you know, you've made a lot of points about how things are not going well in the university system. But then every year, mm -hmm. graduates are churned out, uh, thousands and thousands of them in the NYC camp. Uh, these people eventually fill the labor market and they are out there looking for jobs. And yet... People still say they are unemployable. I don't, I, I don't know what you have to, you know, say about this particular statement that has, you know, besieged Nigerian graduates for years, that they are unemployable. How do you react to that? You see, this is what we've we'll been saying for the past more than 20 years, more than 30 years. Create the environment where these children will have good education, good laboratories, good training. And then they can go out and look for a job all over the world and they will be employed. Sure. But let me give you that. That is not completely correct. Even with little we have. Today our doctors are living, you are aware, being employed in UK all over. Our engineers are living. Our lecturers are living, being employed outside. Because of the tenacity of the academics you have, that still try to give them the best they could, even with a very poor environment. Is there no country, is there any country where they take a lecture from a window? Any country in the world where you see 100 students using one microscope? How will they get the best? So when we make the environment favorable for the student, we will have the best, we we'll create avenue, create jobs, create opportunity for them. They can go all over the world and send money and repatriate the hard currency home. That's what we are saying. Build your university. Build your laboratories. Don't allow them hanging from window. Don't allow the two children sitting on the floor. Mm. How many people have you seen studying with their children during convocation in Nigeria? But if they are, if they are doing convocation in any country of the world, you see they hanging around them. So that is our problem. Let us, we have the brain. Go all over the world. There is no university in the world you don't see Nigerian lecturing. There is no country in the world you don't see Nigerian doctors working. There's no country in the world, you know, the uh, engineers all over the country, all over the world. So it's not the brain, it's the environment. A government should ensure the environment because in such a way, no matter the sacrifice this government is going to make, it's in such a way that our university system will become the best in the world. Our polytechnic will compete with any polytechnic in the world. Our colleges for education will compete with any college in the world. That is what we want, not what we are doing today. And even with this poor funding, they are still busy proliferating universities. The job uh, uh, passed a bill to establish two new universities in Kano, in Kano State, another one in Enugu State, all over the country. When you say you don't have money to fund the one you have, why are you creating more? To create more problems for the system? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, um, all the problems that you have listed and the ones we've been hearing over the years uh, seem to be on infrastructure and so many other physical things. What about the curriculum of the curriculum nowadays in universities and in schools generally? Are you comfortable with what you're using now? Because some people have said that we've gone past that age of the curriculum that is being used, whether it is tertiary or secondary education or primary education. What are you doing as academics uh, to revamp these curricula that we've been using? What, what they are saying is we are dodging the issue. They are dodging the issues. You don't have environment, you're talking about, about uh, curriculum. Even if you had the best curriculum, you don't have a I think the, the internet the, uh, the is audio, breaking, yes. The audio seems to, we have seems to have lost the audio of... I want the system to go. Set, I, I set up a system that allowed people to come from all over the world to teach the arts. We are going out. So that is what, many of us, we also have the foreign relationship. So it's not about curriculum, it's about the environment. When the environment is right, the system, when you go to another university where you don't have a, you don't have the same curriculum, 
like you are seeing today, you need to develop the, how the program for all Nigerian universities. It's not done anywhere. Every university develops its own system, develops its own program, its curriculum. You have to know how to be a general for universities. But today, it's just to me, what I said, it is just to create an environment to leave the issue. We are leaving the issue and discovering the inconsequential. That's what we are having today. All right. Uh, a lot of the conversation has, you know, somehow placed all the blame on the table of, you know, the federal government. How there is poor funding, no infrastructure, and, you know, no increase in payments for uh, lecturers understood. But do you not think that, do you think that there are, you know, things that could also be done by the university system itself to help improve themselves? Are there not things in your house that you need to put together to at least, uh, you know, help or ameliorate some of the things that you're going through by yourself? What are the things that you think can be done differently by the university system, aside from everything that is expected to be done by the federal government? Well, for we to go there, the first thing first is allow university to run. Let me give you an example. A university wants to build a two-bedroom toilet. Are you following me? He must go to the ministry to get approval to build. He must go and hire a consultant from outside the universities. He must go and get a contractor from outside the university before he can build that building. When you have all those set of human beings within the system. So most of them, any money that I will come to the university, including grant, grant that I did, I did have sought for the university, the money must go to TSA. And for you to get to money for TSA is almost impossible. So how will they work when they have been, their hands and legs have been tied? All their funds must go to the like, general to the TSA. For you to get, you must get their permission. Even grants that are coming from individuals to fund the universities, uh, because no, 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 no serious grant giving body what are their money to pass through that procedure they would, would, would hardly get grants so we want to say again allow university to run hmm. let me also give you an you know what every year are you hearing me yes every year that university spends 1.7 billion naira on diesel 1.7 billion naira on diesel but what if that university gets from federal government as fund for running the universities is 115 million a year 150 million in a year but spend 1.7 billion on diesel alone a difference of about 1.5 billion naira after what the government are giving how do they generate it that is what universities have been doing. They have been running on those costs. So it's not correct that the federal government is funding the university. They, they, what they do now, they, they try to pay salary. That's what they are doing. But all of that cost, electricity, uh, internet service, uh, computer, all of them are run by the system using their idea to generate fund within. But they will see that that fund you generate must go to TSA. Now, people will come and say, you must pay 25% of that amount to the federal government uh, account. When have universities become a fund agency? You can check that if you get X amount of money, you must pay 25 to the government uh, uh, federation account. Is that how universities are run? Well, I, I don't know what to say. So, so what we are saying, let the university run their own. Federal government provide the funds we are giving and give to university to augment what they are generating and run it perfectly. Not go and put their fund into what they call TSA, Treasure Sego Account. That is not what has happened anywhere in the world. There's no way that happens in the world. For you to get that money, it becomes a problem. Okay, uh, this UTAS, um, some people still don't uh, understand what this UTAS is all about because one of the problems that arose from this, uh, your discussion with the federal government was that they refused to use the UTAS and they were using something else. And they stood that it was a universal thing that they were using for everything else. Why is the university system supposed to have these uh, special um, payment platform, so to speak, Try to explain to us, please. I will explain by looking. Let's look at the laws. 
the loss of the university is indicated very well that any document, any circular comes from the ministry are null as far as come to university because of their loss. We federal government say they want to pay an NPC using uh, IPPIS. Are they paying National Assembly using an IPPIS? These are agency created by law. Are they paying sexual pastor using IPPIS? These are agency created by law, just as university is created by law. I will say also allow university to run by its law, not because I'm appendage of a ministry. That is what we are saying. That, and what we have created is so that it will handle all these issues. As I was speaking with you, many of my colleagues are CBO 20 month salary omitted by IPPIS. As I was speaking with you, the consequential adjustment of minimum wage in my own university here, more than 40% of our members have never been paid. And you have all these things all over the country because of the problem by IPPIS. And for you to correct it, they say, come to Abuja. And you see, Professor, 100 of the queue before a, a clerical officer to correct those things. And you go back, it's not corrected. Use your money. Where does that happen in the world? So we have developed a system for this country that is free. The IPPIS, they pay in dollar to a foreign company on just how to pay salary. In a country you say you are broke, you don't have money, but you can generate money you are paying to a private company outside on just the simple method of paying your worker salary. But we are giving them a free one and they are telling stories. Because some people very likely have special interest in the IPPIS. That's our problem. So Utah is a gift. We want to give to the government. And we hope the next government will look at it and accept it as mode of payment of salary, which is which is the least thing you can think of in a country. Not go and hire a foreign company to tell you how to pay your salary. I will give all the data about your staff and give to those foreign companies. It's not done anywhere. Professor, can you hear us? Are you there? I'm hearing you. Okay, so there's been a lot of, you know, schools of thought have come up to say that there's been back and forth within the university systems about how lecturers lecture in too many different schools at the same time. And this has, you know, caused a lot of damage to the students in the sense that these lecturers, because they lecture in too many different places, they do not have the time to focus and give the students their best. How do you react to that? You see, this is no part of what we hear in this country. When people talk, you just talk without evidence. Mm. By the law of any university, no lecturer can do visiting in more than two universities. Mm. By any UC guideline, there are distances you should not go beyond when you are doing visiting. That is what the law says. So how many of our colleagues have been caught going outside this role that have been disciplined? That's what we are saying. If anybody has been caught, discipline him. You don't generalize. That is what I do. Before you can go for external uh, uh, visiting or whatever, you must get the permission of your universities. So how many have been caught? So that is what we are saying, that we should be talking with evidence. Not just saying a lecturer are doing this. I am not. If there is any, please catch that person is committing infractions and let the system deal with him. Not generalizing. Two. As part of the measure to cure, to, to help that the system function very well, and if there is a fraction they are dealt with, the, our law says that every five years, the federal government, the president of this country and visitor to universities, must set up a visitor panel to each university to audit the universities. Look at the finances, look at the staff, staff uh, the development, look at all these things you are talking about, and make a recommendation for the system to properly deal with that universities. We have to go on strike after 11 years before the government agreed to set up that panel. The panel was set up in February 2021, where in December 2022, the report on that panel is not out so that you can discipline with those who did the fractions and praise those who have done well. Do we, does it take two years for a result report of a panel to come out and you take issue to correct the, the anomalies? So that is it. It is we, who are workers, the academics, that have to force government to come and investigate the system. Is that how it should be? So we are doing our own, but the government has refused to do its own. Just release a white paper on your audit report in the universities, you refuse. 
So who do you blame? Do you have an internal do you have an internal mechanism of disciplining these people? Because now that the schools are open, you have called off the strike. Uh, if you are going on strike again, that's another issue. But for now that you have called off the strike, there are, there are reports from students, because you're talking about evidence, there are reports from students of uh, some lecturers oh, maybe tasking them too yes. much, maybe, um, I, I don't want to use the word extorting them, but that is almost like what it is uh, now in schools. Do you have a mechanism to check them and make sure that they keep the integrity of the lecturers? Let it not be that, okay, because we went on strike and we called off the strike and the government is not doing anything, we can do the way we like. And like you have said, auditors are not likely to come maybe in the next 10 years, we can do what we like. Do you have any mechanism to check them, to check your colleagues that they should not overdo? What I'm saying... What I'm saying, these are still generalization. Let the student name those who are doing it. That's what we expect. To who? Let, Let the university, the who? journalists, you are journalists. There's what they refer to as investigative journalism. Send people there, unknown to the system. Let them take and name somebody. That's what we are saying. You don't need generalization. It doesn't work in my, the system. My question but is, if a student wants to name the minute. people, I, I, if a student I, I wants to answer, name I the people the or the, par the parents wants to name the people, who do they name these people to? Who do they report these people to? That's what I'm asking. So if there's a student that has Look, evidence, where does he report? I have, I have served as, a, as, as, as a, a staff of this university where I am. I have chaired the sexual, uh, the, the, what do you call it? Uh, the harassment and all the, what do you call it, the extortion. We have chaired a committee. You bet the senior put paper so that people can make their report. Okay. We even open the boxes. Wait. Can people sort it? And also, what we refer to as ethics committee, yeah. students' ethics committee, that we expect them to report to. And then you report and we take it from there. All right. You, you mentioned visiting lecturing. Uh, how effective is this visiting lecture? I, for one, uh, I've, I'm out of school, but it's in not been faculty, so long. We have box. Can you hear me, Professor? Every, 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 every city, people for staff. So this woman said, it, it should not be a generalized issue. You journalists, the you to do it before, I don't know now. Send somebody who will act as students. Let it come to the university. And do your best again and catch somebody. Not this generalization where they say the harassment, this thing. What we're saying, journalists in Nigeria, our, our colleagues in the journalism, please do investigative journalism before you make your report. Send somebody innocently to the system who will pretend to be a student. Let it give you a report. That is what you do in other advanced countries. Do that and see whether what you are hearing is correct. Not this thing you hear in the public, uh, they are doing this. Right. It is extortion. In my university, we have sacked a number of people, and I have shared a number of them, people who have misbehaved. And we have. All right. Okay, Professor. So we have the evidence to do that. Yeah, Professor, um, it's, it's good you're saying this, but uh, I tell you for a fact that that investigation that you're talking about has been yeah. done by a lot of people. but. The kind of things that you have set up in your university does, does not exist in other universities, in a lot of other universities. Mm -hmm. So that even if you make this finding, the only time you can talk about it is like we are asking you right now, so that you say it or you debunk it or you tell us the right thing to do. Because you cannot go and report to who is not existing. You have a, a ethics committee set up in your university they don't exist in every other university. And I tell you, some of us who are um, media people have children. Some of us have done these investigations and have found out that some lecturers, I'm not saying all of them, but some lecturers are really, really making it difficult for the students. And the t students seem to not have a place or an avenue to go, and, to go and report or to go and say some things. Because if you do that, it might earn you something that you do not want to mm -hmm. have. So if you have this ethics committee, please, it would be good enough to make sure it is in every university and the students know. And they know also that they are confident enough that whatever they do, there is anonymity, there is protection for the person who brings the information. So it's good, well, the Mudike is there, but it's not 
there in every every university. You should know. But that. our union, every campus of our union, we have our own ASU, ethics and and a, and a committee in all the universities. You can report. We don't have the final say, but we can take it from there to the system. But what we are saying, if you say a lecturer is doing this and that, publish to the public, show it to the public, let the public know that particular lecturer. And then that person is this way, is there, that way. You remember what happened, you know, or are you? Or are you? Where a student had the courage to do that, and the man is in jail. He went to jail. So let's see this. I don't like generalization. Just like you can say, because you, there are two or three criminals in Nigeria, there are two or three bandits in Nigeria, there are two, uh, there, there are number of uh, this in Nigeria, and you say Nigerians are bandits, Nigerians are thieves. Is that correct? Say, mention the person here and say, this one is a criminal. You don't say Nigerians are bandits, Nigerians are uh, kidnappers. It's not correct. Name the person. Just because you have one or two or three or some kidnapper in Nigeria, you say Nigerians, you go to US and say Nigerians are kidnappers. Is that correct? Professor, let's talk about uh, visiting lecturing. How effective has it been? What's your success story? Because uh, there's also been reports, especially among students, that mostly visiting lecturers do not pay attention. And what that, what, where they, what that literally means is that they are in and out, no consistency. Some come in and you don't see them until the next two months. How do you react to that conversation? Do you, what do you have to say about it? A visit, like, like I said earlier, that a visit lecturer by our system, you should not go beyond more than two universities at a time with permission from your system. Uh, and two, by any regulation, there is a distance you cannot go beyond. And it's there stated. But what was a VC lecturer is this? Let me explain it. You have a department and you have a specialized university, in maybe in electronics engineering, that is teaching a course. And by asking that man resign or dies or whatever, and there is nobody to teach that course. It is that course that the that university will go around neighboring university and get somebody in that area that will come and teach that course alone that cost alone, that's it. That is visiting. A visiting lecturer is not a full-time lecturer. You come to teach a specialized course for which that particular university you are come to didn't have a specialist to teach that course or doesn't have the specialist to, 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 what you call it, supervise a student, do a PhD in that area. That is the idea of visiting. It's not a full-time job. I think that should be clear. Okay, uh, well, uh, Professor, at this time, since you said uh, Nigerians should pressure their representatives on the government to do the needful, we just want to re-emphasize that. Just talk to Nigerians, because uh, you can't have everybody being on the other side and not be on your side. So let Nigerians know specifically the things they can do to make your job easier, because it's... All of us that have the children there, our brothers and sisters are there, and everybody's affected if tomorrow our future is bleak because of the way our education system was uh, treated. So just talk generally to the Nigerians and to the government with this opportunity that we have now to wrap up this segment, please. Let, let, let me put it this way. Uh, my members are back to the university in the past two months, and you can go around and they are working hard, working late, do all they could do to cover the background, the backlog of what they did do while they were strike. You can check that. Doing exam, doing 2021, 2021, 222, trying to cover all the backlog so that sacrifice their leaves, sacrifice their whatever they have to ensure that they cover the backlog. That's what they are doing in every federal university and state university that were on strike. You can go and check and you will see that. But the government came up to say, academic, no work, no pay. You didn't work, you should not be paid. When the people are busy doing those jobs now, we have an option to say no pay, no work, no work, no pay. In which case, that we will tell the university to resume that let's cancel 2020, 2021, 2021, 2022, and start in 2022, 2023. All those people you have admitted, let them go. Let them go or wait or go and take jam again and come over. But because of our interest, and our feeling for Nigerian people and their children, we are doing this job we should have done, making all the sacrifices. But the federal government is insisting that they will not pay a cobble. They will treat us like casual workers. 
Nigerians please appeal to the government to avoid other complications in the very near future. Mm. That they should pay all those backlog. The negotiation we were going that we have written an agreement, let government come and sign that agreement. All that they are owing us several years of any academic allowance they should pay so that there will be peace in the system. Let them also release the white paper of the Shell Panel report to universities so that those universities have misbehaved and are not doing well, those who do it will be punished and sanctioned so that the system will move well. That is our appeal to Nigerians. My people have suffered. They are teaching, staying the evening, doing all sort of work, coming on a weekend to ensure they meet up with the backlog. And somebody is saying, no work, no pay. Please, appeal to those you elected to do the needful in the interest of our children, in the interest of Nigeria as a country, this giant of Africa to behave really like the giant of Africa. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Professor Sodeke. Um, some of these questions, uh, I'm sure you've answered them on several occasions, but we needed to still hear them firsthand and all that. And it's good that your people have returned to uh, classrooms. Uh, we are hoping it will stay that way, but the government needs to do what they have to do. So every Nigerian is concerned, and we will say what we need to say, but you also just keep your promises. God will help us in this country. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the you, show Professor. today. Thank you, thank you. I have a nice day. Yes, you too. You too. Okay. Oh. It was really uh, heated, but I, I would have wanted him to, and you know, throw more light on that visiting lecture thing because you can't. Do, I wasn't satisfied with the way he answered that question because I was in school too. I was in the, the school. The operational and, word and visiting lectures, no. It's not nice no, no. at all. The oper operative word that he used was supposed. So <laughs> they are supposed to be lecturers X, Y, Z that do this and that. I but that may not be what the lecturers are doing. So what happens if you're trying to make an, uh, what, an alternative for students to have their lectures, even after their lecturer resigned or you know, lost his life? Then do it properly. How do you come teach one course, uh, teach the course, teach a topic, off of a course and then you disappear for the next two months and you return again and you give a test and next thing we're writing exams how do you even what like what do you expect yeah so this just exposes the fact that a lot of lecturers are just recalcitrant it's not because they are visitors somewhere else or they're doing something that is running foul to the law and yes. how do we catch them first of all we need to find out what that law that is. that talks about visiting is and then know where to report to like he said in his school there are boxes but there's only so much you can do as a student True. otherwise you'll be sent home <laughs> or you will be so uncomfortable in that school that you cannot know what touched you so they should make it a bit more easy for us but anyhow it is it's been really uh an eye-opener talking to professor Sodeke. I think at this point we should just take a break and take the news and then when we return, other things about our superpower we'll uh, <laughs> agencies that are arresting and convicting people will come up. Stay with us, please.